The history of any country is always bound with unrevealed secrets, sacred places and riddles which scientists have been trying to solve for decades. Kazakhstan is an ancient land. Its history keeps a lot of glorious names, events and facts, some of which are still covered with myths and legends. The Time Puzzle crew tries to understand the intricacies of ancient and modern mysteries of history, traveling around the country and visiting its most amazing corners. In this episode, ancient secrets and modern surprises of the history of one city. Ancient cities, mysterious and majestic empires, culture and way of life of people of the past. All this causes interest of searchers all over the world. There is a city in Kazakhstan where archaeologists have been trying to explore its secrets for many years. Its history is so rich, unique and accessible that it can be touched by digging anywhere in the city. Various evidences of antiquity like pieces of pottery, jewelries or ancient coins can be found. Over 2,000 years, the city was the largest in this region. Thousands of caravans with various goods passed through it. It disappeared from the chronicles for a whole century and then again appeared in a mysterious way. What is hidden in the depths of the ancient city? The first layers of Taraz are very interesting. Why did the region's largest city disappear from the annals? It is not known for sure what happened to Taraz. What links Taraz and the famous Soviet singer Anna German? In 1943, Ima, her daughter and her mother, moved to Jambul. Watch all this in the episode. This city is more than 2,000 years old. Once it was the center of the Silk Way, the city of merchants. That's how merchants from around the world used to call it. My name is Andrei Slojin. It is the time puzzle. And today we are going to learn the secrets and legends that the city of Taraz keeps. Taraz is located in the south of the Republic of Kazakhstan, near the border with Kyrgyzstan, in the valley of the Talas River, between the mountains of Karatau and the western Tian Shan. Now it is a small but modern city with a developed infrastructure and population of almost 400,000 people. At first glance, a visiting traveler would never say that Taraz is almost 2,000 years old. And for sure, no one would say that on this land, where citizens are now walking peacefully and live a regular life, quite recently in historical terms, serious passions were boiling. And very few people know that, according to historians, its foundation was laid by the Huns. The head of the Department of Jambil Regional Museum of Local Law, Ludmila Kapilina, told us about this. The first written sources mention Taraz of the first century BC. This is due to the tribe of the Huns, who once left the Chinese Empire and founded the city here. The Han governor, Ji Ji, chose the lands in the upper reaches of the Talas River. There, there were fertile lands, rich hunting grounds, and founded the city here. The city was built by 500 soldiers. The city was built for two years, but the Chinese empire did not really like the situation when a part of the people went out of obedience, and they repeatedly raided the city of Taraz. The era of the Huns covers 4th and 3rd century BC. It was a forceful land power that spread from Lake Baikal to the Tibetan mountains, from East Turkestan to the banks of the Yellow River. However, in the middle of the 1st century BC, the state was divided into two parts. The first came under the influence of the Chinese Han Dynasty. The second, at the end of the 1st century, left to the west, to Asia. The northern Huns, led by the ruler Ji Ji, met a huge number of other tribes and peoples there. This fact makes many historians to continue to reflect on the classical version of the origin of the ancient city of Taraz. This opinion was shared by archaeologist Umit Malik. 
According to some sources, we believe that the city was founded by the Hanik tribes, the Han Shanyu Chuji. For example, Al K. Hakanech Magulan, great historian, ethnographer, also believes in this. At the very same time, the Kanli tribes lived here. At about the same time, the Usun tribes lived here too. They also were numerous tribes. They also left their mark in history and were preserved in the sources. Usually generalizing all this, I try to say that the city was grounded by local tribes. Local tribes lived in synthesis, interacted with each other. That is, I prefer to say that the city was established by the Usun tribes, Kanli tribes and Huns. But according to the legend, the city was founded by the Huns. According to scientists, the city owes its uprise to the Saka and Usun tribes in the 6th, 5th century BC. This is an ancient settlement of Taraz. In the Jambul region, archaeologists have discovered a huge number of artifacts which prove that the city of Taraz and the whole region was undoubtedly inhabited by ancient tribes long before the common era. There is a unique exhibit, the Bronze Aquarius. It dates back to the 1st century BC. And here in this hall we have another unique exhibit, the most unique exhibit of this hall, the helmet of a Saka warrior. Across the whole territory of the former Soviet Union, only three such helmets were found. This is one of them discovered on the territory of Jambul region and it is the jewel of our exposition. It is possible that the Saka and Usun tribes concluded a peace treaty with the Huns on some specific conditions and they allowed the foreigners to settle here. However, such a peaceful life did not last long. The second part of the army, which went to China, did not accept the fact that their former tribesmen and co-religionists decided to become an independent state. The Han army constantly attacked Taraz. Three times the city resisted. For the fourth time, the city fell. And as a sign that the city fell and the people obeyed, Gigi was beheaded and his head was sent to China. It was the first century BC. After this event, in any of the known sources, there were no information about Taraz. It remains the main mystery of modern archaeology, which one day perhaps will find an answer. Now the closest historical evidence of Taraz, which is known to modern researchers, remains the data dating from the 5th century. And even now, many archaeologists have doubts about this. Allegedly, at that time, a Chinese traveler, a Buddhist monk named Xuan Dan, was passing through this area. He went along the northern branch of the Great Silk Road to the city of Yasa, which is now known as Turkestan, and passed through the city called Talose, one of the ancient names of Taraz. However, according to historical data, the monk Xuan Dian could not pass the ancient Taraz at this time, since he was born only 200 years later, in 602. Then the city of Taraz disappeared from the pages of history and again loudly declared itself in 568. You probably know that the territory of Jambul region was part of the West Turkic Khaganate. The Great Silk Road passed through the lands of Western Turks. This opinion is more true in terms of history. After all, the Western Khaganate included the territories of modern Kazakhstan, the North Caucasus, the Crimea, the Urals and almost all of Central Asia. This empire was so powerful that many rulers of neighboring countries couldn't ignore it. To get Western Turks into their rallies, one of the Byzantine emperors, Justinian II, sends his embassy to the capital of the Turk Kagan, Dissabul, and in 568, the embassy was met in the city of Taraz. The crew of the time puzzle met with an archaeologist who has been studying the history of the city for seven years. During the conversation, Ruslan Burambayev mentioned a unique find which could give new, perhaps unexpected information about the history of Taraz in the future. But now this artifact is hidden from the public. Stone with writings on it, as we suppose. But these inscriptions have not yet been deciphered. Now work is underway. 
The stone itself is in Almaty. There it is being investigated by specialists in Almaty. Unfortunately, we could not get access to this stone because the importance of the find and the complex process of its study. However, other finds discovered at the excavations of the ancient Taraz have already become real surprises for scientists. Of course, we went of course, we looked at the stratigraphy at the pits, that is, the remains of ancient structures. And of course, it is very interesting. The first layers of Taraz are the most interesting, because it shows that there were also large structures made of large raw blocks. There were ancient coins, the same Byzantine coins which date back to the 6th century. At first glance, the appearance of Byzantine coins here seems paradoxical. But if we remember the fact that the Silk Road was the main trade highway at the time, this fact does not seem so unusual. Few people know, but there are speculations that after the fall of Rome, some of the Romans moved here. This was written in the book The Geography of Ethnicity in the Historical Period by the Russian and Soviet Orientalist, historian and geographer Nev Gumilov. As is known, Taraz had diplomatic relations with Byzantium and also they carried on trade with each other. Also, Taraz accepted fugitives from the empire. There was a Nestorian temple in Taraz. In the middle of the 5th century, the Nestorianism in Byzantium was condemned at the Nicene Cathedral. And all these Nestorians from Byzantium, from Syria, they all moved to the territory of Central Asia. Their temples are found not only in Taraz, but also in the surrounding area. Buddhist temples and mosques are found here too. Ceramic tableware with the image of the Nestorian crosses, Buddhist symbols, were discovered here, which shows that the level of religious tolerance in the city was very high. By itself, this temple also raises many questions among researchers. According to their assumptions, the city of Taraz was a kind of place which standed neutral. It was possible to live and work peacefully here for people of various religious trends. Wars were banned here. Thanks to this attitude, the Nestorians fled here. They began to live according to the laws of the city to conduct trade and build temples. A historian, Inka Kazmadyarova, told us about one of them, which, by the way, is almost unknown to the general public. There are the moistened parts of the wall. It's all archaeologically preserved. That is, it was like this in the original form? Yes, we raised it slightly so it would be clearer for visitors. Because, let's suppose, at this altitude, the archaeologist would have understood it. And ordinary people would think, what is it? So, possibly, was it even higher? It could be some kind of dome at the top. Yes, it turns out that these sufas, you see, they are also preserved from that time. They were found during archaeological excavations. These pylons, what are these? They were also preserved. In architectural structures, pylons were built at the entrances, most likely to strengthen it, exactly at the entrance. You see, one, two, and the third pylon is not preserved. So the pylons were from both sides of this door. There was a door here, and it turns out that these pylons are not preserved. These ones, I see. This mosque was found in 2005, during the archaeological expedition of the Institute of Archaeology named after al Hakanich Mogulan. It was originally a church, a Christian church of Nestorian persuasion. Later in 893, during the attack of Ismail ibn Ahmad to the Taraz and the Sherji mines, the Kalu Kagan who ruled in Taraz, in order to preserve independence, converts to Islam along with 10,000 inhabitants of the city of Taraz. And according to the orders of Ismail ibn Ahmad, all the religious buildings in the city of Taraz had to turn into mosques. 
The reconstruction is evidenced by the fact that initially two entrances were located on the west side of the building, as was customary for Nestorians. When the temple was turned to mosque, these entrances blocked up and they made others. They were now located from the northern part, as according to Islam. Later, when the object was converted into the mosque, these pedestals of the central columns were added, as in mosques. And the object resembles the Central Asian style of the mosque, well, allegedly. This place is interesting not only because there is the most ancient Muslim temple in the region, but also because there are remains of some ancient road. I'm now walking on stones that someone laid out almost 8,000 years ago. We can see the power of Taraz because of a historical fact that in the 11th century the rulers of Samarkand and Kashgar obeyed Tugan Khan. The city reached its heyday in the 10th and 12th centuries. It was a large trading city with widely developed crafts. Glass blowers, blacksmiths, porters of Taraz were famous for their skills. It was a typical Central Asian city-state. That is, the city had its own government, its army and its mint with the right to mint an independent coin on behalf of local rulers. The city has changed. Caravans arise, minarets, mausoleums and other monumental buildings began to be erected. Masters began to experiment with new materials. So for the first time, in addition to clay, they began to use burnt brick, stone and tile in the construction. The facades of the buildings were decorated with all sorts of ornaments. Archaeologists have several assumptions about what people were doing here. In general, according to Arab architectonics, the cities were divided into shakristans, citadels and rabats. The citadel is the place where the nobility lived. Shakristan is the most populated, the busiest part of the city. Rabat, trade and craft buildings where mostly the poor lived. The greatest development Taraz received in the 10th, 12th centuries of our era. It was the the capital of the Karakanids. Already at that time there were clay, water and sewage, cobbled streets, sidewalks and public baths. How did we know that it was a bathhouse? There are heat conducting channels there. Unfortunately the furnace is not preserved. The waiting room and two main rooms. We observed that the floor of a bath was made of clay. It was laid with clay tiles. From the 70s, during construction of the meat pavilion, the remains of the bath were discovered. And by the efforts of the local director of the museum, by Bosin of Kuzembai, the sauna was preserved. It was simply filled up with a ballast layer. It was known that there were the remains of the bath, the remains of ancient building. And in 2011, by the efforts of archaeologists, thanks to local Akim, excavations were started. During the excavation of the bath, archaeologists continued to deepen and expand the research site. The first clutches appeared. They found a huge amount of shingles, lamps, dishes, various copper and brass vessels. Archaeologists have realized that they discovered not just a standalone bath and caravan shed, but something bigger. Curious that the modern bazaar is located in the place where the ancient market used to be. This is a typical trader's shop. Here they laid out the goods. There was a storage room. The seller apparently was here and beckoned to buyers. In the 11th, 12th centuries, Taraz became the center of trade. It was a cultural and economic oasis of the Semirechia, which included many small fortifications such as Atlak, Shelji, Juvikat and many others. According to historians, there were at least 30 of them. All this was guarded by the military. Until now, in the vicinity of Taraz, you can find the remains of watchtowers. There were many different rulers who contributed to their culture. But strangely enough, Taraz escaped bloody battles. At least, this is told by historians. 
Life went on as usual. Visiting merchants came to the city, sold goods on the market, or second-hand dealers stayed in ancient hotels, went to public baths. However, such a peaceful life did not last long. Later in ancient Taraz, an event took place that radically changed the course of the history of not only this city and the region, but also the situation of spheres of influence practically on the entire Eurasian continent. As a result of internecine wars, the state of Karakhanids was weakened and began to undergo frequent attacks, first from the side of the Karakitais, then from the side of Shah Karaz and Muhammad. Finally, in 1219, the territory of southern Kazakhstan fell under the weapons of Chengiz Khan. Written sources about the Taraz of that period did not survive, but scientists and archaeologists have discovered during the excavations that the inhabitants of the city had strongly resisted the enemy, because of which the city was completely destroyed and burned by the Mongols. It was also possible to establish the reason why the Mongols burned the city almost to the ground. These events have forever gone down in history as one of the most bloody in this region. And very few people know, but the reason was the revenge of Chengiz Khan for the insidiousness of the local ruler. Khorezm Shah Muhammad robbed the Mongolian caravan. And after the Chengiz Khan sent his ambassadors to the Khorezm Shah for explanations, why did this happen? In response, the half of Mongolian ambassadors were killed, and another half were expelled naked to the steppe. Some of them got home, and Chengiz Khan could not leave it, and came to this territory and all this state was destroyed. In addition to Taraz, there were also Sirdarya cities, cities of southern Kazakhstan. All this blooming area was literally destroyed for several years. Then the Mongolian civil strifes began, which also did not contribute to trade and sustainable development. The theory that the city of Taraz was destroyed by the Mongols was first put forward by archaeologists, comparing the story of the defeat of Otra, another no less large ancient city in Kazakhstan, and a special archaeological lair during excavations. A version was put forward that the city was simply burnt. However, not all researchers consider this. The Mongols did not burn out the entire city. Such an opinion archaeologists took after when they found that the traces of fires were located point-wise. Similarly, after the Mongols arrived in this region, their protégé began to rule in Taraz, even installed a mazar in the city. This was told to us by the custodian of the monuments of ancient Taraz Reserve Museum. Museum, Anna Krokosheva. The name of this person was Bagel Bulga Igbalkan Daudbek. He died in 1262, that is, it is the middle of the 13th century. This is the time when Taraz recovered from the ruins. After the Mongol Tatar invasion, the city suffered very badly, but it was reborn but already on a smaller scale, and in fact, there was a process of extinction of city life. Curious, but the evidence of the fact that the city was still subjected to destruction and suffered a bloody attack are the treasures found in the excavations of the ancient Taraz. Two gold treasures were found here. They consisted of gold, silver jewelries, which included earrings, rings, bracelets and in knots. Moreover, it was clearly seen that the man buried this golden treasure in a hurry. We found them under a clay floor where a man dug under the clay floor and simply tempted them. Apparently in the face of some danger, before the invasion of enemies, he buried and left this place. But unfortunately for him, and fortunately for us, he could not return for some reason. Maybe he was killed or something else, but all this was found by us. It is unknown for sure what happened to Taraz. There are no written sources, unfortunately. Let's say we know for sure that Otara fought heroically. It defended itself. And nothing is known about Taraz. Maybe it was burned by the inhabitants themselves, so that the enemy wouldn't get the city. Perhaps, after all, there was an assault on the city. 
But after conquering the entire region and the city of Taraz, urban civilization continued to develop here. The city from a large mega center turned into just a small town. But it existed before the beginning of the 15th century, and there was a permanent urban population which consisted of artisans, masters, and farmers. In the 16th century, the lands of Semirechi became part of the Kokand Khanate. A new period in the history of Taraz began. The Kokand residents discovered the remains of the ancient city, erected new walls on them and strengthened themselves in this region. Then Taraz got a new name. The beginning of Aulia Ata goes back to the second half of the 19th century, when the territory of southern Kazakhstan was conquered by Namangan people. Uzbeks who came from Namangan, who formed a fortress there and named it Namangan Kuche. People began to settle around the fortress and subsequently a city was formed, which was named Aulie Ata, in honor of one of the rulers of the dynasty of Karakanids. In 1864, the fortress Aulia Anta was taken by Russian Colonel Mikhail Chernyayev. Few people know, but the key role in this was played by Chokhan Valikanov. There are data in the Russian archives where it is said that in 1855, at the direction of St. Petersburg, Chokhan Valikanov had to visit the Kokand Khanate in order to find out the location of the fortresses and the number of troops. It was thanks to his efforts that the fortress of Aulia Atta was taken almost bloodlessly. Archivist of the regional state, archive and journalist Makulbek Ruzdaulet told us how this happened. Before the arrival of the Russian army in our region, the Russian army conducted reconnaissance. They met with influential people, made gifts, signed agreements with each other. The Russian army conquered these lands without any obstacles. Then among the Kazakhs there was a huge resistance against the Kokand Khanate, because recently it imposed large taxes on the people. For example, the tax on boys 11 to 12 years old and girls from 12 to 15 years. The Kokand feudal lords subjected the Kazakh population to cruel violence and arbitrariness. Immediately after the establishment of the Russian Empire here, the city of Aulia Atta was designated as the center of the country. Russian officers Mikhail Chernyayev and Maximilian Lack described it as follows. The monotonous appearance of the city buildings is mitigated by the gardens that are set both in the city and in its surroundings the cool shade of which serves as a welcome refuge for the Asiatic during the unbearable heat of the day. There are grapes and apple trees, rutabaga and pear trees. The nature is rich, the climate is healthy, the land is generous, protecting labor of tillers and giving a magnificent harvest. Meadow places are excellent, irrigated by clean mountain rivers and springs with holy water. Here then, a new governor-general was created. They adopted a charter on the governance of the southern regions of Kazakhstan. According to this statute, they established a management system. In the beginning, the center of the country was considered Aulia Ata. But later, taking into account some circumstances, they moved to Tashkent. Then the city of Aulia Ata was larger than Tashkent and Shimkent. After the transfer of the governorate to Tashkent, Aulia Ata became a place of exile. The convicts began to build the Semirechinske railway, set up street lighting and again paved the sidewalks. The city still remained a flourishing center of commerce. At first, it was like the outskirts of Tsarist Russia, after Kazakhstan joined Russia. But nevertheless, the accession of Kazakhstan to Russia played its leading role in the development of both Kazakhstan and our region. Here, the industry began to develop. The money signs went into use. But at the same time, Russia made Kazakhstan its branch appendage and a place of exile. In particular, the most famous exile was Konstantin Ivanovich Skrabin, the first scientist and mythologist. Later, Soviet power came here. The regime change was rather gentle and bloodless. 
by 1936, Aulia Ata was renamed Mirzoyan in honor of the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Bolsheviks of Kazakhstan, Livon Mirzoyan. It is curious that he took office in the city of his name only in 1937 and occupied it until 1938. May 15, 1938, Mirzayan received a telegram from Stalin which said that he must immediately leave for Moscow. On May the 16th, he was released from office and on May the 23rd, Mirzayan was arrested. And in February 1939, he was shot. While in Lefortovo, literally just before the execution, Levon Mirzayan learned that the city where he was once the main man was renamed Jambul in honor of the Kazakh poet and musician Jambul Zhabayev. Later, the poems of Jambul Zhabayev dedicated to Leningrad were scattered throughout the country in one of the most difficult periods of life for all the inhabitants of the Soviet Union. <laughs> During the Great Patriotic War, two equestrian divisions, several battalions and companies were established in the town of Jambul. The 100th and 101st Independent National Brigades were assembled. According to available information, we know that in the Jambul region, there were 20 heroes of the Soviet Union, seven cavaliers of the Order of Glory. All this is documented. After the war, all these heroes and cavaliers of the Order of Glory, they all worked on the Jambul land. Very few people know, but surprisingly, the fate of one of the most famous singers of the 70s of last century, Anna German, is closely connected with Taraz. In 1943, a young teacher moved to town with her little daughter. In 1943, Ima, her family, her daughter and her mother moved to Jambul. Here she also goes to school. She works as a teacher. And here Anna German studied the first three classes. Here they met the great victory. And in May 1946, Ima filed an application with a request to send them to her husband's homeland. She was considered a Polish widow, and on May the 5th, 1946, they left Jambul. The period of popularity of the singer Anna German was in 70s, 80s years. Her songs were listened in the Soviet Union and Europe. Nevertheless, despite such glory, the singer remembered the city which sheltered and brought her up. This is one of the favorite singers of the Soviet era. But she did not forget her small homeland, Kazakhstan, in particular Jambul, and she came here in 1979. Very few people know, but Anna German got the national recognition after a terrible car accident in Italy on August the 27th, 1967. The singer's impresario crashed into the concrete fence. Anna German flew through the windshield. She received multiple fractures, internal organs were torn. Anna spent more than a week in a coma. The singer learned to walk again, to do basic things on her own. Three years later, she gave her first concert after the accident in Warsaw. In the same year, she received a golden disc. And a year later, she recorded a song to the music of Alexandra Parkmatova and Nikolai Dobronravov's poems, Hope. Anna German died because of the sarcoma on the night of August the 26th, 1982, in the military hospital in Warsaw. In general, the city of Taraz was very much loved by many Soviet artists. So, for example, a phrase from the movie Gentlemen of Fortune entered the story. Jambul, it's warm, there's my mother. Few people know, but in fact it was proposed by Yevgeny Leonov. On the eve of filming the film, he was in the city with tours, and although there was winter in the yard, Jumbo seemed warm and native to him. Here, Robertino Loretti gave his last performance, and the famous for the whole union Mahmoud Asambayev danced here. In 1998, President Nazarbayev returned the ancient name Taraz to the city. Without a doubt, this city keeps in its depths many more secrets waiting for their discoverers. 
Perhaps in the near future, archaeologists or ordinary townspeople, by simply digging a garden or building a house, will discover new finds that will help fill the wide spots in the long history of the ancient city of merchants. Taraz seemed to me a city with a smooth and unhurried energy. Even the time here flows in a special way. Perhaps it is because the city has been here for 2,000 years. My name is Andrei Slozhin. It was the Time Puzzle. See you.